Once upon a time, we talked about cell division. Um, we talked about mitosis cell division for the purposes of growth, because in order to grow, you have to get more cells in your body. Um, for repair, because in order to, you know, repair injuries like cuts and broken bones, you have to fill in all of that with new cells through mitosis. But today we're going to talk about the one that we didn't get to so much, and that is cell division for the purposes of reproduction. Now, um, cell division for reproduction can take place in a couple of different ways. If you were a unicellular organism like a bacteria and you reproduced asexually, um, then you might do mitosis. And in our body, mitosis happens for growth and repair. So in the human body, we're going to think of mitosis as mitosis. You need it in your big toe to get new body cells. You stub your toe, you get an injury, you need mitosis. A human cell has 46 chromosomes, a full set, also called 23 pair. We're going to call 46 today. Um, during interphase, we have the copy phase. So 46 becomes 92. And just for a little bit, your body has 92 chromosomes because then it does that P mat C, like the puppy, you know, peed on the mat C, and then the cells get 46. So one cell of 46 copies and divides. We get two new cells with um, a full set of 46 chromosomes identical to the original cell. We have one division, two new cells, and the new cells are identical to the original cell because you wouldn't want your toe getting creative and creating new cells in the toe. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you would have like crazy parts of your toe that would have freckles and parts of your toe that didn't have freckles. You don't want that. You don't want your toe being creative. You want identical cells. Now, meiosis is the type of cell division that is done for sexual reproduction. I like to think of meiosis as E for eggs and uh, S for sperm. So meiosis makes eggs and sperm, whereas mitosis heals your toe. It only happens in the ovaries and the testes. Ovaries in females, testes in males. Um, so we have 46 chromosomes everybody starts with, and they still copy to 92 during interphase. So the beginning looks really, really similar. This is when things get a little bit different, though, or actually it looks the same still a little bit. Uh, we got 46, you know, because we get a PMAT C, but we can't have uh, sperm and eggs having 46 chromosomes. So we need them to divide again so that we get 23 chromosomes in the final cells. So we wind up with one interphase and two rounds of PMAT-C. This gives us two divisions and it also gives us four new cells. But importantly, those four new cells have half the amount of genetic information because they have to combine together um, in order to give us, you know, a human. So in females, this is eggs. In males, this is sperm. Now, interestingly, in females, this only happens before we're born because females are born with all the eggs they're ever going to have. Males make like a million sperm a day. That's a lot of sperm. So like all guys, once they hit puberty, just, just making sperm all day all day, every day. It's, it's amazing they can get anything else done, really. Um, so, sexual reproduction makes offspring that are different from the parents. This is important. We talked about this with the previous video about sexual and asexual reproduction, right? This happens because, first of all, you get half information from each parent, but secondly, during interphase, the one round of interphase, a curious thing occurs during meiosis. This curious thing is called crossing over. Dun, dun, dun. This is taking a long time to write. Sorry, not as dramatic as I hoped it would be. Okay, so crossing over. Um, we get that interphase, that copy of DNA. So um, I'm going to start out here with one set of chromosomes. They're pretty amazing. Notice we have like an eye gene. We got freckles, widow's pea, hair color, and type of hair. Original chromosomes. This is not a real set of human chromosomes. Uh, the human genes are spread out a lot farther than this, but this is our example. Now during interphase, we need to copy our DNA. So here's our chromosome copy. Notice it's exactly in the same order. I've just done the color difference so that you can see, you know, the original versus the copied. Okay. So during interphase, 
we get crossing over. The chromosome copy chromosome pairs line up, and then they just randomly exchange information. At all different points down the pair of chromosomes, we can see information exchange. So you could have brown eyes and like blonde hair, or you could have blue eyes and blonde hair, brown eyes, brown hair, blue eyes, brown hair. This mixes up all of the genes in the parents so that you're never going to have two offspring that will wind up with the exact same amount of information as any other offspring from those parents. It just shakes up all the genetic information. So then these would further separate, so you'd have egg one, egg two, egg three, egg four, and each egg then has a different set of information. The next time that the body would go through this, it would exchange information at totally different places. This increases genetic variation. Why is genetic variation important? I don't get it. This is crazy. Because genetic variation is what allows sexually reproduced organisms to survive. It's a good thing. Um, we've grown up in a society where, like, it's good to be different. If we were all the same, it would be boring. I'm not talking about things that are superficial. I'm talking about reducing risk of genetic diseases because since your genes are shuffled around during that crossing over of interphase, it means not all the kids are going to get the same set of genes. Also, um, because everyone's genes are different, not everybody is affected buy things the same way. So everybody in a family typically isn't gonna have the same allergies. Um, everybody in the family isn't going to have um, the same aversions to foods. Poisons aren't gonna kill all of the humans. Diseases aren't gonna kill everybody. We saw an Ebola outbreak a couple of years ago. Everybody didn't die from Ebola because some people's genes were different. This is good for our species. Individually, it doesn't benefit us as individuals, but it benefits the sexually reproduced species because since we're all different, you can't kill us all the same way. Bacteria, you can all have bacteria the same way because one antibiotic will wipe them all out. Not so much with sexually reproduced things. So mitosis makes body cells. Meiosis makes sex cells. These are also called gametes. They are sperm and eggs. Mitosis, those body cells have a full set of DNA, but in meiosis, we only want a half set in the sperm and eggs. Uh, mitosis, we have one copy. And in meiosis, we get that crossing over for that genetic variation. Mitosis, we get two new cells. In meiosis, we get four new cells. Um, now, meiosis, we increase genetic variation, but in mitosis, we don't want variation. We do not need your body cells getting creative. Um, meiosis is for sexual reproduction. Mitosis is growth and repair in humans. So now we have both types of cell division, and we can talk about fertilization. It's a good time. <laughs>